Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about why Ice Spear might be a bit of a dead skill compared to Creeping Frost uh, cast on crit. Uh, now with the new gem changes in particular. Since the quality of Ice Spear has changed, you no longer get uh, two free piercing projectiles or uh, two, two free pierces per projectile making your clear a lot worse and that made me kind of consider a few things and look at a few things in particular as to is it better to go creeping frost cast on crit than it is to go ice spear now so uh i want to preface the fact that the gameplay you're going to be seeing on the screen is of cast on crit creeping frost it is a very high-end version of the build but the point still stands that if I had a very high version, high end version of Ice Spear, which I have made this league and tr and tested, it, it bar none competed way better for Creeping Frost. Now, there's a few particular reasons, but I want to pull up some examples, and uh, I'll try to remember to put some examples on screen of different builds. But there's a few main versions of Cast on Crit Ice Spear that I want to touch on. Now, the first version is the high DPS Occultist version, Low Life with Cospreys. It's running a Cospreys with Chevron's wrappings. It's now running Dragon Fang's Flight because Ash has got nerfed and you can no longer uh, do the life reservation trick with Ashes. You now need to have life reservation in other means. And the only real way to do that is with Dragon Fangs or using the mastery on the tree. And then uh, since you're reserving typically three 50% auras on the build, you need more than 20% reservation life of reservation efficiency. So you get that through the amulet. Uh, this build runs Prism Guardian as its main shield, and that's allowing you to get a lot of reservation efficiency with your auras uh, for your life reservation. And it means you don't have to run arrogance either. So you don't have that added... Uh, reservation cost on your auras either so it is the best way if you're doing the low life version the glass cannon low life version prism guardian is the best way to res reserve your life as a uh, as a means and then you stack energy shield as uh, your main hp source so you'll end up with like somewhere around like 20 life and then you'll have like 5k energy shield or something close to that uh i think the the glass cannon versions usually hit around four to 4.5 thousand but the issue with the glass cannon version is it runs no armor and it runs grace as its main source of defenses and with the way the build works you can typically only get about 25,000 evasion and you have no block you have no other really good defenses except for energy shield on hit which is not going to help you when you're getting one shot by enemies you just can't recover a one shot right you can't use your es on hit as a way to recover a one shot so i guess what i'm trying to say is the build's very glass cannony it's expensive for what you get out of it and but if you want to deal 300 million dps uh you can you just also will take 300 million dps so something to consider when uh going for this version now with this version the issue is before you would get pierce for free so you didn't have to worry about getting it elsewhere. Now you have to either run it in your six link, which um, cast on crit ice spear already has an issue with having enough gem sockets for its six link. And then the other alternative is getting projectile pierce in your boots, in your double influence boots. Um, problem with that is you can no longer get tailwind and or cooldown recovery rate if you're using projectile pierce unless you spend a lot of currency to get projectile pierce elevated in as it, i think projectile pierce is a prefix it's a it's a hunter prefix so and it's uh not the greatest of weights it has no tags no craft tags so you can't like suffix lock reforge for it uh you can suffix lock reforge influence if you do that, your odds are is like a one in eight to hit proj. So you could do reforge influence, otherwise you exalt for it. But like a metacraft for it, that is. But my point stands is that if you're putting projectiles, P 
piercing as a prefix on your boots, it means that it's taking up an energy shield mod. So right off the bat, you're sacrificing more defenses for something that the build used to already come with. Now you can run, if you're running cost breeze, you can run ice spear splitting now as a way for general clear. And then your single target comes from the main six link. Yes, that can work. The issue is your clear damage is not going to be high. Everything er, taking damage from Ice Spear is splitting is not going to take a, a ton of damage. It's yes, you'll knock out white mobs. Yes, you might knock out magic mobs, but rares are probably going to live um, and get to you or, you know, like unique enemies or stuff like that. So you have to consider those aspects as well. Like Ice Spear splitting as a as a two link, giving you just power charge on crit, it's not gonna be enough to uh, to really get that that kind of level of clear compared to that of Creeping Frost, which has AOE blasts that are shotgunned uh, up to ten times. Those AOE blasts are going to hit at full damage everything in an AOE around you, and then you have Herald of Ice explosions as well. Now, Ice Spear also has Herald Explosions, so yes, I get that. But uh, the AoE Blast, it's a big AoE. It leaves a ground degen that is actually very potent and gives you um, a lot of single target plus clear for no extra means. It also means you don't have to run Cost Breeze, so you can run a, uh, a dagger with hits can't be evaded. There's your accuracy issues sorted right there. Uh, you don't need to meet your 212 dex requirement or whatever because you're not running cost breeze. So there are like a lot of reasons why uh, Creeping Frost is a lot more comfortable and gives you a lot more room to, to make a, the build. Now, if we move on and off of uh, the low life version of Ice Spear and we talk about the Chaos Inoculation version, which is running the dagger and is running Ulnatol's Vow and Skin of the Loyals. Some versions are running Nimis. Some versions are not. Uh, Nimis is going to help with clear, yes, but you still need that projectile pierce. Without projectile pierce, you're definitely going to feel it on the Chaos Inoculation build because your spears are going to get stopped by the first enemy it hits, which means if, if there are white mobs in front of you and there's a rare mod behind that pack of white mobs, your ice spears have to cast and hit those white mobs first before they reach the rare. That gives the rare a lot of time to hit you back. Um, also with cast on crit ice spear, again, you're losing energy shield if you go for projectile pierce in the boots. And you need to run Ulnatols for the seven link, which with creeping frost, you can do a six link with a focused amulet now. And that's really powerful for the amount of damage you get. And then the rest of the build is pretty much the same in terms of defenses. And then the helmet, you run, uh, you can run an aura helmet or you can run a double influence power charge with nearby cold resistance helmet. Uh, typically, I suggest running a hubris circlet with these cold builds over the blizzard crown. The thing about blizzard crown is it treats enemies as if they have 10% more cold resistance. So you need that flat cold to out damage scale the amount of... Uh, it, that flat cold basically needs to do more work than 10% Ellie pen would, which most builds won't be able to pull off. That's why we run things like blanketed snow. We already lack damage penetration. We can typically get like 30% cold pen. Maybe we get 40% cold pen, but that cold pen is, is pretty crucial compared to that of, um, like some some added flat damage which your build already has a ton of because you're using one of the highest flat damage skills in the game and you're not really scaling that flat damage that tremendously you're typically scaling crit multi instead uh, yeah that's kind of my thought process on that so overall i am explaining this because like i think cast on crit creeping frost is not getting enough attention i think it is for the most part in every way shape or form better it's got better clear it's got the same amount of single target if not better single target because you can do things like scale the aoe damage with uh or or the damage in general with area hits and you also get projectile hit damage as well not only that 
you still get to run Sniper's Mark on Creeping Frost. It still does great work with Creeping Frost, uh, even fantastic work. Um, your Militant Faith can have area damage instead of elemental damage. It's a little more flexible in that regard. Your Double Corruption doesn't need to be plus one uh, to level of socketed and plus two projectile. Instead, it can be plus two duration and plus two projectile, which gives you an extra level on Creeping Frost meaning that the damage can scale even better on the double corruption that is it, it, the the build also is typically getting the same amount of projectiles so um you run greater multiple projectiles and then you're running like plus one on your charm and then you're running plus two on dying sun that's typically what you're getting off of the ice spear maybe you're getting two more projectiles off of uh extra projectile charms for Ice Spear, but Creeping Frost caps out at 10 projectiles, which is about as many as you're going to get on Ice Spear anyways. And also the damage doesn't take time to wind up and hit the target. If you look at Creeping Frost and the way it applies damage, it is cast to contact instant. It, so there's no first form wind up that the, that like Ice Spear. Ice Spear has to like wind up its first form get into second form and then at second form it takes off and goes really fast but that first form it has kind of like slow travel time to things that are further away from you than than being in point blank range um is typically if you have like say a crowd of enemies around you your ice spears are only going to hit like maybe 25 percent of your area range around you whereas creeping frost is going to hit the entire area around you always um because it's got that big AOE blast. Basically, I'm making this video to bring to light the fact that uh, Creeping Frost scales exactly the same way as Ice Spear does. The only difference is that on POB, it doesn't calculate the damage correctly. You have to add the projectile count yourself manually. It will only calculate the damage for one projectile, whereas with Ice Spear, it automatically calculates the damage for all projectiles, which is why on POE Ninja, you see things like Ice Spear reaching 150 mil DPS, whereas you're only seeing Creeping Frost reaching 15 to 20 mil. Um, that 15 to 20 mil is per projectile. So you count 10 projectiles, that's 150 mil DPS. It's the same you're getting out of Ice Spear. Yeah, uh, this is basically just a PSA for Creeping Frost. I don't think it gets enough attention. I think it's way better than Ice Spear is, especially after the uh, Ice Spear change. And uh, I just kind of wanted to tell you guys about it. So hopefully you learned a thing or two about this. All you Cast on Crit fiends, I know I have a lot of Cast on Crit fans in my following. And I want to tell you guys that Ice Spear, uh, it ain't it anymore, in my opinion. I think Creeping Frost is just a thousand times better. Um, and then obviously Forbidden Right, Cast on Crit will always be there. That skill is just as good as Creeping Frost. It's got the same thing going for it. It's a projectile and an AoE skill, so it's got the same uh, damage scaling capabilities. Of course, it is a chaos damage skill, so you have to focus more on levels and raising your flat ES to, to gain extra damage. Um, but the point still stands that Forbidden Right and Creeping Frost are pretty much identical in the way that they function, except um, one build uses uh, Withering Step and uh, Flame Dash, whereas the other one uses Frost Blink. Um, uh, one needs to reserve for frostbite. One can cast despair without needing to reserve it. So that's something else to think about, but, um, forbidden, right? will feel a little clunkier, but typically can scale further. Um, but yeah, th this is just a rant video about cr cast and crit creeping frost. I think nobody's talking about it and people should be talking about it. It's way better than Ice Spear. If you've been committing to cast and crit Ice Spear, I'm telling you, you guys should pivot. If you just literally keep your build the same way it is now at, as an ice spear build just take out ice spear and put in creeping frost you will feel it immediately how much more comfortable that skill feels it's amazing i don't know how else to put it uh of course these cast and crit builds are always going to be uh not budget because they run mage bloods and there's no way around that but um this is just a psa for those cast on crit guys that ice spear ain't it Just pivot to creeping frost it is it is the skill you need to be playing um and yeah hopefully you guys learned something all right i'll see you later take care